Now, I gotta say, I do dearly miss Black Mirror. It is one of my favorite shows of all time. But Death, Love, and Robots scratches that itch just enough. For a while, I've been wondering kind of where Love, Death, and Robots fits in, like who the audience is for a show like this, because first of all, it's a really weird show. Real quick, if you enjoy this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing. I make new videos like it every week, help the little channel grow, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. If you show someone any of the episodes of this show, it's bizarre. I saw season one and I saw season three. I skipped season two because people said it was bad, so I didn't watch it. I don't know if it's bad, I don't want to see it. So I watched season three and I thought season three was pretty great. I think it is becoming increasingly obvious that Love, Death and Robots is Netflix's way to replace Black Mirror, a show which they killed for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Even in the opening credits of the show, it's almost identical to the way that Black Mirror would open. And a lot of the concepts are just like, Weird. I mean, that's what Black Mirror became known for, is like how weird the show was. I will also say, if you like animation, this is a show you should absolutely be watching because every episode, most of the time, is a different style of animation or it's a slight twist. Maybe it's the type of animation that you've seen before and they're all done incredibly well. They're so much fun. And I guess that's sort of where the show lives for me. It lives in this little like, this is a fun show, but I don't really know if it's like more than that because a lot of the times in Love, Death and Robots, an episode will start and then it'll just sort of end. Most of the time, except for the three robots, they don't revisit any of these episodes ever. So some of these endings, I think I could see people not being satisfied with them, but I'm always interested in where these stories are headed. A few standouts for me from season three are definitely Bad Traveler, I really liked that episode a lot. I really enjoyed the episode right after that with the astronaut who starts hallucinating after her crewmate dies, I think, sort of, maybe dies, not really sure. Those two episodes are really good. I also liked the episode with Joe Manganiello. Second to last episode, that was really, really great as well. Oh, also Mason's Rats. That just goes to show, there were a lot of really strong episodes this season and I could easily see any of these episodes being your favorite episode of the season, which goes to show just how strong of a season this really was. Now, it's weird because I think one of the best things and one of the things that hurts the show the most is that it seems increasingly clear that they do not discuss with the other creators of the other episodes what they're going to do beforehand because this show, I love how random it is. I love that it's a, you know an anthology series and all that. It's really, really great. You know, you're getting something fresh every time, most of the time. The only thing I want to point out is that they are doing a lot of army related episodes. Like it's happening a lot. They're also doing a lot of alien in a cave related episodes. I mean, there were two in this season of some giant alien in a giant cave. That was just sort of like, this looks really like oddly familiar and almost like they copied off each other's notes and just changed it a little bit. Those are both great episodes. It was just kind of weird that they had them in the same season. They also had, I think, two or three army episodes, which they've done a lot in the show. And I don't want to say it's a crutch because those episodes, like the one from season one with the, I think like Soviet soldiers, like fighting these like werewolf looking thing. That episode was awesome, but that was in season one. So at that point, they hadn't really done that many episodes like it. Now they were like a third of the season is army episodes, which are cool. It's just that it's, it's becoming kind of clear that this is like what a lot of the creators are relying on or that this is the subject they kind of want to explore, which I get. It's not that these are bad. It's just that they're happening kind of frequently on a show that is usually at its best, the weirder it gets. Now, I also think a show like this has a lot of longevity. To be fair, if you're on Netflix, you're always in danger. I think unlike Black Mirror, with these episodes being so short and hopefully a lot faster to write, it allows them to crank out way more seasons than Black Mirror after I think it capped out around five. And even during that time, the seasons were never more than a few episodes long. It's great that Netflix has a weird show still because I like weird, I like science fiction, like weird stuff, like really out there. Stuff that you're just like, what did I, like, what even was that about? This show exists in the like WTF section of, I have no idea what I'm watching sort of thing. And I think that's great. I think that's really important. I'm glad to see Netflix is letting a show like this continue, hopefully, you know, until all of the people involved run out of ideas, which happened on Black Mirror because one guy made the show. But a show like this, which is an anthology series with 
tons of different creators behind the scenes. This could go on for as long as Netflix wants it to. Hopefully they keep it around for a really long time because I think there's always a market for weird stuff. And I'm hopeful a show like this has enough fans of weird stuff to keep going as long as possible.